So recently, Demi Lovato came out as non-binary. For those of you who don't know what non-binary is, the Wikipedia definition will suffice for this discussion. Non-binary or genderqueer is an umbrella term for gender identities that are neither male nor female. Non-binary identities fall under the transgender umbrella since non-binary people typically identify with a gender that is different from their assigned sex. Non-binary people may identify as having two or more genders, having no gender, moving between genders or having a fluctuating gender identity, or being a third gender or other gendered. Conceptually, this kind of makes sense to me. Forget about the possible biological arguments for a second, since I know people like to bring those up. With good reason, of course. But set them aside for now, close your eyes, and consider things based on introspection. Regarding transness, it is reasonable to conceive of a sense of self where it feels like what gender you should be doesn't match what physical sex you are. Rather, it matches the other physical sex that you see walking around in the world. I've never experienced that, but from a purely self-referential internal thought experiment, it certainly seems possible, and I can imagine what it would be like, roughly speaking. If you can also imagine it in your own internal thought experiment, then consider this other possibility, where it feels like what gender you should be doesn't match with what physical sex you are, but it also doesn't match that other physical sex you see around either. Rather, your sense of gender is something different, or it's non-existent or it fluctuates between the masculine and the feminine on a regular basis. As an outsider looking in, that is what non-binary seems like it would feel like. Again, makes sense to me, especially the possibility where your gender fluctuates between masculine and feminine. I've never had days where I really feel super feminine, but I've certainly had super masculine feeling days and almost agender feeling days throughout my life. I simply chalk that up to natural hormone fluctuations over time. In fact, I'd hazard a guess that it's probably a very common experience to view your gender in this way, as being more or less impactful to your personality in some cyclical manner. However, beyond just natural fluctuations, when I'm with a woman, or I'm lifting weights, or I'm performing some kind of hard yet fulfilling physical labor, I certainly feel more masculine. And I don't think that's just a consequence of socialization. I absolutely think that the increased testosterone from those activities play a role. Despite this ebb and flow of gender importance in my day-to-day -day life, I'd never actually consider myself non-binary, even if I might actually fit the role under some very broad definitions. Under those same broad definitions, it feels like almost everyone fits the role. But now that Demi Lovato has said, my pronouns are they, them, I've noticed a shift in the discourse. And in my opinion, it's properly described as the final stage of the commodification of the trans identity. Let me explain what I mean. Progressives generally feel that media representation is very important. I'm sure you've seen stuff like this before. The BBC will have more gay characters in its shows to combat heteronormative culture. Why Arab and Islamic representation matters. LGBTQ series regulars on broadcast TV hit an all-time high. In fact, the TV industry is urged to increase LGBTQ representation to 20%, despite the LGBT population being at only around 4.5%. I understand, on some level, the necessity of seeing at least a few people like you in the media that you consume. At this point, I'm sure we've all seen those interviews where Whoopi Goldberg says she was inspired by Nichelle Nichols on the original Star Trek, playing a role as a black person who wasn't a villain or a servant, but was actually doing something important on the Enterprise. And the similar story where Nichols wanted to leave the series but was convinced not to do so by Martin Luther King Jr. for the exact same reasons. Despite everything that was going on in the United States at the time, here was a black woman in a position of importance in the future a person of competence and intelligence, who was showing the audiences of the day what black people could be, in an era of TV that didn't really do that. I also understand the artistic appeal of making race-bent or gender-bent variations of previously existing properties. Othello is a play about a Maghreb general in otherwise all-Italian society, generally played nowadays by a black actor among a white troupe. But there's certainly value in a race-swapped portrayal, where Othello is white and everybody else is black. Seeing Robin as a girl in The Dark Knight Returns was similarly a lot of fun and the story's more grotesque style translated into the character being rather ugly, but in a specifically androgynous way. That's not to say that androgyny is always ugly, obviously, but when it is ugly, it's like this. I don't even necessarily mind the stuff that makes historical figures different than they were if the point of the work isn't historical accuracy. I think that's why people made fun of Battlefield V so relentlessly. Not because it was putting disabled female soldiers of color into World War II, but because it was doing it and claiming it was an accurate portrayal of history. If they had said, listen, we're just having fun here, I wouldn't have given it a second thought. This is all stuff that the progs are correct about on some level, but it also leads to a pretty shitty end result that they've completely embraced. If representation for the sake of representation becomes popular, it makes money. And if it makes money, there will be somebody out there willing to do it not for the sake of the representation, but for the sake of the money. 
This is another one of those old man dev stories I tell on this channel a lot. But back when I was a young leftist, the discourse revolved a lot around tokenism, the practice of making a symbolic effort at inclusion, sometimes even a real effort at inclusion, not because you value inclusivity as an end in itself, but because you value the money that inclusivity brings. Or inversely, you fear the loss of money that not being inclusive would bring. Back in my day, a lot of the efforts that were moving towards inclusivity were derided by leftists as being just tokenism. It's my experience that you can often tell if something is actually soulless tokenism if it doesn't represent reality in any way when you see it. It's a big fat red flag when characters shoehorn the author's politics into conversations. Same as when the new stewards of a property are completely unwilling to adhere to the pre-established lore of that property in the name of representation. And also when the discrimination that's alleged in the story doesn't really seem to actually exist in real life all that much. I mean, sure, I can see how a girl might be teased for being too tall in school, but that's simply because kids are shitty creatures and will tease you for anything, not because they actually hate tallness. I mean, really guys? Really? Thus far, we've only spoken about representation in fiction, which let's be honest, doesn't actually mean anything big picture, even taking the Star Trek example into account. It's an entirely different set of problems when you begin to talk about representation within technical fields, where the person's qualifications are the only variable that matters. Tokenism here is far more unjustifiable, because if it turns out that a specific group of people, for whatever reason, I'm not saying genetics, doesn't produce as many scientists, for example, establishing hiring quotas or admittance quotas for schools causes serious problems. You want the best people possible in these positions regardless of race or gender, but not just that. If, let's say, you admit a bunch of people who can't hack it to a difficult technical program based on their race and they all drop out, you're artificially inflating the dropout statistics for that race creating the snowballing problem of overinvestment into a group, spawning the very conditions that require the investment. And of course, nobody ever sees it the other way around. For example, trans women are drastically overrepresented in the field of computer programming, but nobody wants to limit their participation in that field, and it wouldn't be a good idea to do so, because skill should be the name of the game. And despite all of this, leftists nowadays have completely leaned into tokenism, to the point that progress now means rejecting colorblindness rather than striving towards it. Which brings us back around to Demi Lovato. I got into a big old Twitter fight with some trans activists over the topic, as I often do, being me. And Twitter's 240 character limit meant that I mangled a lot of my points. Knowing that I'd fucked it up, I decided to write everything out to try and accurately explain my position. You can go read that if you want, but I'll just tell you the important bits here. One, it doesn't actually matter to me if Demi Lovato is non-binary. When Twitter's trending tab says Demi Lovato changes bio pronouns to they, them, I couldn't give less of a shit. When Twitter doesn't let me click on the thing and select not interested, I know that this is something that's being astroturfed to try and revive a celebrity's failing career. But I don't care what celebs do, and neither should you. Two, non-binary may be within the same classification of things as trans, but it's certainly not the same level of severity. If you're trans, your biological sex and gender identity are polar opposites of each other, and you may need to deal with any mental issues that arise as a result of that. You may need to deal with abuse or lack of support from friends, family, or partners. You may need to deal with transitioning, socially, hormonally, possibly even surgically. You may need to deal with learning the social cues of the other gender. You may need to deal with not passing, and that's a whole other can of worms. And three, I want you to contrast point two with Demi Lovato's situation. Lovato is a cis woman appearing non-binary individual who passes fully as a cis woman, acts fully like a cis woman, fully adopts the public gender role of a cis woman with seemingly no masculine components to that role whatsoever, who doesn't have to worry about passing, who doesn't have to worry about surgery or hormones and other trans medical issues, who doesn't have to worry about social ostracization. A lot of this stems from Lovato's status as a celebrity, but it's not just that. Like I said, the severity level is not the same. Here's another example of what I mean. Destiny considers himself to be non-binary, but he still uses he, him pronouns. At one point, he talked to Lance of the Serfs, who immediately began the call by congratulating him for coming out and being one of the biggest trans streamers around. Um, is it true you identify as non-binary now? Yep. Uh, congratulations. That's Why? awesome. Uh, well, that by definition would make you one of the largest representative trans streamers on this platform. Yeah, but that's really weird. I got a lot of messages like, congratulations. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. Really? Well, explain why. It just feels Maybe really I'm, weird. I'm, I'm like, why would I, why congratulate me for like a sexual identity? I guess it's just it's kind of like a strange feeling. I guess. Um, because you are very successful at what you do. You're one of the top streamers on this platform, and then by definition, if you are now going to be able to be representing the trans community, I think that would be a net benefit to human rights in a way. So I'm a, a representative of the trans community now. I didn't ask for this responsibility. Now you're giving it to me. <laughs> well, it's not what I've... All right, well, that wasn't my implication, but I'm just saying that's... Okay, well, then, if you if we prefer I don't say congratulations, I will... Thank I'm you. Off. Thank you for respecting that. All right.
Destiny's reaction here seems to be the reaction of a sane individual. He doesn't want to represent anybody or any community. He doesn't want to be congratulated for something so asinine as saying, I'm non-binary while not actually changing anything about himself. And he doesn't consider himself trans or his possible transness as some larger scale victory. It's a thing that is solely for him. It holds meaning only for him. And that seems to be how it should be. Consider this. Demi Lovato was a name that was on nobody's lips before the non-binary announcement. And since then, that's completely switched around. Celebrities have been doing things like this to revive careers for decades. Ten years ago, it might have been coming out as bisexual to make a headline. Before that, it might have been gossip about relationships or something. Hollywood is fucking cancerous like this. I'm not saying that being non-binary doesn't exist. I'm saying that if you happen to be the type of shitty person who would fake being something for clout, non-binary would be the thing that you pick right now. Just like bisexual would be the thing that you pick picked back in 2005 or 2010. And even then, I'm not saying that these people are fake in their sexualities or their relationships or their identities. I'm saying that there should be a common understanding that even if these things are real, celebrities always reveal it in such a way to either distract themselves from controversy or promote something positive about themselves. My passage on Twitter was never actually a criticism of the non-binary identity. It was always a criticism of celebrities because this is the sort of thing that celebrities do. If there is money to be made in being a thing, then some people will fake being that thing for the money. And some other people who do just happen to be that thing anyway will play it up for the money. That's the point. And oh, you, you don't think that Demi Lovato would do that? Are you ignoring the well-documented history of doing this exact sort of thing? Are you ignoring the constant Twitter tirades that attempt to place Lovato in the center of any current event, regardless of distance or relevance? Are you aware of Lovato's documentary about being sober and wellness and etc.? A documentary that was axed because the star of the show was actually massively addicted to drugs during the filming of it, but was willing to fake it for clout? This isn't a Caitlyn Jenner situation. Despite what you may think of her, I'm pretty sure Jenner's not faking it for attention. If it were all actually just a grift, she would have detransitioned a long time ago. But the difference is, Jenner doesn't have Lovato's long history of lying and grandstanding. If a person has a history of being toxic, exploitative, narcissistic, or prone to public stunts to gain attention, and you tell me that despite all of this, if they come out as non-binary, I must accept it or be considered transphobic? What you're actually saying to me is that your activism overrides the actions, the behavior, and the motivations of the person coming out. That I must accept their transness unquestioningly at all times. And if I have even a hunch that something fishy might be up, I'm a bigot who wants to see trans people exterminated. No, I don't accept that. But now that you're telling me this, You've confirmed something to me about trans activism that I once said as a joke, but didn't actually believe. At one point during the height of making fictional characters say trans rights, like Donkey Kong says trans rights and so on, I said something dumb, like if Hitler said trans rights in an H Bomber guy stream, the trans activists would become fascists or something like that. It was a dumb throwaway joke, but then pink news came out in support of a neo-Nazi because they were trans. I was certainly stunned by this, but then I said, okay, you know, maybe this is just tokenism from a corporation looking to make money, right? Real on the ground trans people aren't going to actually ignore people's crimes because they're trans, right? They're not going to actually demand that you accept somebody's transness, even if that transness might be a tool being wielded for some false purpose, right? Look at this woman. This is an average sized woman on the boardwalk by the beach, listening to music and drinking water. Seems to be just having a good time. She's not model size, but I wouldn't say she's obese. And look at the first comment on it. We love that mid-sized representation. What representation is there? This isn't a piece of fictional media. This isn't a career hiring or a school class. This isn't a celebrity applying for eyeballs. This is a regular person living a regular life doing nothing out of the ordinary. But now it's representation. She doesn't have to be representative of anything other than herself. And yet, the commodification of identities has led people to credit her for something she's not doing simply because she's in a photo. Oh, by the way, every time you see that return to tradition shit, it's the rightoids trying to adopt the same tactics. They may be commodifying a different identity, one that appeals to rightoids, but it's the same thing for the same reason. Don't listen to any of them. You should be doing whatever feels right for you, but more importantly, you should be doing it in a humble way. The Christians were onto something when there was an injunction to public prayer in their religion. Even they understood that virtue signaling was ultimately a vice, and I think it applies here too. This is why I don't think I'm transphobic and I don't accept the logic of the lefties who claim that I am. I don't hate trans people. I don't want to see them exterminated. I don't want to see them disappear. I want to see them receive every bit of help they need. And if there is some kind of government-run healthcare service in a given area, I think trans people should have equal access to it in a way that meets their needs. Same goes for non-binary people too. I have to admit, on a personal level, I think I would find it hard to regularly use they, them pronouns if I actually knew somebody who wanted me to. I can feel that it wouldn't come natural to me, but I also know that I would at least make an effort for the sake of that person because that's who I am. But 
I will never accept the idea that I'm transphobic simply because I notice that some people are bad and willing to hide behind the progressive sacred cow. At this point, coming out announcements like this feel as self-indulgent as baby gender reveal parties. It's a way to call attention to yourself and your life that might work on some small scale with, say, just your friends or your family when it's appropriate. But when it's done large scale on an international stage by a public figure, it just seems gaudy. I don't care what gender Demi Lovato is. That's their business, not mine. But I'm not going to listen to people who tell me that my eyes are lying. Transness is the newly commodified identity right now. And while non-binary people most certainly exist, I suspect there's a lot of young people who want to wave that trans flag for kudos right now. Who are setting pronouns as a she, they, and writing long Twitter threads about their new journey of self-discovery, despite there being no practical difference between them and your average cis woman. In much the same way that so many bisexual women a decade ago never got with somebody of the same gender and were never actually attracted to them either. But hey, it made them look progressive on campus. That shit made real bi women look bad. It made lesbians look bad. And I've now spoken to a number of trans people who feel that this current trend makes them look bad. I sympathize with them. No matter what the progs say, I'm never gonna actually be against trans people. But if they expect me to acquiesce to their ideas that being pro-trans means not accepting people who are clearly coming out disingenuously, they've got another thing coming. 